All right, sorry guys, no I haven't died, but have caught one hell of a nasty flu in the meantime, which is why I had to stay in bed with fever for quite some time, and of course it always takes me like forever until my voice fully recovers. But now I'm hopefully all back up and running, which is why I'm taking a look at an amazing but relatively cheap and affordable AIO liquid cooler. Today I'm testing Arctic's new Liquid Freezer 2 liquid cooler, the 240mm version of it. it took years for this to finally release, but it seems the wait was well worth it. Normally I wouldn't spoil you that soon, but with this unit I can't help it. I just have to let you guys know, the Liquid Freezer 2 240 right now, at the time of filming, can be had for about 70 to 85 US dollars, depending on when and where you shop. On top of that, it's extremely quiet in operation and, now hold on tight, it beats all of my previously tested CPU coolers, no matter if it's air or liquid cooling. I was amazed, to put it simply. But how well is this unit actually built? In other words, how is the quality, installation and so on looking? After all, quite important things that need to be factored in as well when it comes to making a purchasing decision. Also almost impossible to unsee is that tiny fan we got on the pump unit. What is it for and could it really be as horrible as most of you already expect in terms of noise levels? We'll find out in today's video. As we are used to from Arctic, we get all the necessary stuff we need with paper documentation kept at a minimum. Noteworthy is that the unit is already assembled right out of the box as you see it here. At this point kudos to Arctic for keeping the cable management incredibly clean. The fans and pump unit only need to be connected via a single 4 pin PWM cable. It practically doesn't get any easier than that. Something that also stands out from the rest of AIOs out there is the fact this radiator is much much thicker with its 38 millimeters than most radiators with only 28 to 30 millimeters. But let's talk about aesthetics for a moment. It is interesting if that's the word we want to go for. I gotta say the design sure will polarize. Some will hate it, some will love it. Honestly, I'm not really into it that much. I mean the looks of the radiator, the fans and tubing look great, but it's the pump design I'm not really a fan of, aesthetically speaking. But luckily looks never really make it into my final rating since beauty always happens to be in the eye of the beholder after all. RGB lighting, as you may have seen already, is non-existent here. I have a fairly neutral stance regarding lighting. I don't think we necessarily need to have rainbow effects on each and every component. Sometimes things can look just as good when it's kept sleek. But now let's leave the looks behind and get to the actual important stuff. Other than most other all-in-one liquid coolers in the market, this liquid freezer too is not based on an acetic pump. Arctic has in fact developed their own PWM pump, which should bring lots of performance to the table while remaining super duper quiet and consuming only very little power. And now to the mystery, the 40mm fan on this unit. This one is meant to drive or rather produce some airflow for the VRMs. As we all know, both air and liquid cooling comes with their respective pros and cons. A disadvantage with liquid coolers is that the VRMs on the motherboard no longer get any airflow something that pretty much is a useful side effect with air coolers. While I didn't do any measuring of temperatures in the VRM area, I gotta say there's not a whole lot of air circulation going on, but still it is a very light breeze. And luckily for us, the 40mm fan is close to inaudible. So worst case scenario, we have a small VRM cooling advantage with this implementation, but actually no noticeable cons, mainly when it comes to noise levels. The first time I saw the fan, I thought to myself, oh god, that little be sure we'll be screaming and make our ears bleed. Luckily that's not the case at all. So it appears Arctic hasn't gone crazy and did keep our concerns in mind. And in general I can actually tell you guys this whole unit is pretty damn quiet in operation. Even with everything set to 100% speed, still a very pleasant experience in terms of noise levels, no matter if we are talking about the fans or pump. In my opinion a pro if you want to install this cooler into bigger cases are the longer than usual 
tubes. You may be familiar with the issue. Most AIOs only sport 400mm long tubing, which can be a bit of a tight fit at times, especially if you want to mount your radiator in the front of the case. Here with this Arctic cooler we are talking of 450mm. Finally a manufacturer that takes it to the next level. As for CPU sockets, actually only the more recent ones are supported and even there we see some limitations. For instance LJ2066 and 2011 only are ok if you have a motherboard fitted with a square ILM with 80x80mm 80 80 spacing. One of the hottest topics the last couple of months has been Ryzen and AM4 is fully supported as you'd expect. In the future I will be moving to testing CPU coolers only with the Ryzen 7 3800X. Right now I'm still in the transitioning phase which is why I still use Intel for this purpose too. The installation on both platforms is super easy and straightforward. You hardly can make those steps any easier, so mad respect at this point. But for a short while I'll finally keep my mouth shut now so you can take a look at the test results. As you can see I didn't promise too much, the Liquid Freezer 2 240 liquid cooler does in fact beat all the CPU coolers I've ever tested so far. Not just those that you've seen in my charts, but all of them actually. However, what makes this result so amazing is that we're talking of an all-in-one unit that only costs us like 70 to 85 dollars. Furthermore, we are only discussing the 240mm version today. I don't even know how much cooling performance the 360mm variant has to offer then. The incredibly good performance can pretty much only be explained by the very good pump and the thicker than average radiator when it comes to AIO units. But how Arctic actually managed to do this is not really of great importance for us consumers. What matters to us is the price and performance, value pretty much, and that one seems close to perfect this time around. Of course we could have a reason to be a little concerned. This all seems a bit too good to be true. Do we see lower quality thus a shorter lifespan here? Not an easy question to answer. Only a long term test can give answers to that. But at first glance this seems to be a really well made liquid cooler. Those fake fittings are out of plastic but then again these are only there for looks anyway. So to sum things up all that can be done with such a AIO liquid cooler it's seems Arctic has done right. A dead simple, almost idiot proof installation procedure, not a single cable that needs to be plugged in somewhere else other than the CPU or pump fan header, no cable clutter and last but not least, incredibly good cooling performance at a quite affordable price. I know, I know, this kinda sounds like an ad, but it's not. I'm pretty much mind blown by this thing and I haven't expected results like these. So without the slightest doubt I'm giving the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 240 my super rare highest possible award Platinum. And with that being said, thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one.